Hi, nice Hi. to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Have you ever done one of these interviews uh, over the camera before? No. Well, let me tell you a little bit about the job to get started with. It's not just um, a job, it's sort of probably the most important job. Uh, the title that we have going right now is Director of Operations, but it's really kind of so much more than that. This job requires that you must be able to work standing up most or really all of the time, uh, constantly on your feet, constantly bending over, constantly exerting yourself, a high level of stamina. For how many, like, for how many hours? Uh, 135 hours to unlimited hours a week. It's basically 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I'm sure you'll have a chance from time to time to maybe just sit down here and there, yeah? Uh, you mean like a break? Yeah. Uh, no, there are no breaks available. Is, th is that even legal? Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. Okay, yeah. so like no lunch? You can or... have lunch, but only when the associate is done eating their lunch. Now this position requires excellent negotiation and interpersonal skill. We're really looking for someone that might have a degree in uh, medicine, in finance, and the culinary arts. The associate needs constant attention. Sometimes they have to stay up with an associate throughout the night. Being able to work in a chaotic environment, if you, if you had a life, we'd ask you to sort of give that life up. No vacations. In fact, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, and holidays, the workload is gonna go up, and we demand that with, with a happy disposition. But when there's time to sleep or... Oh, no time to sleep. Yeah, all-encompassing, all almost. That's exactly right. 365 days a year? Yes. No, that's... That's inhumane. That's, that's very insane. The meaningful connections that you make and the, the feeling that you get from really helping your associate are immeasurable. Also, let's cover the salary. The position is gonna pay absolutely nothing. Excuse me? No. Nobody's doing that for free. Yeah, pro bono, <laughs> completely for free. No. What if I told you there's someone that actually currently uh, holds this position right now? Billions of people, actually. Who? Moms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Moms. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> oh! <laughs> and they meet every requirement, oh, don't wow. they? Moms are the best. Yeah, there's no pay. They're 24 hours. They're always there. Now I'm thinking about my mom. Yeah, and what are you thinking about her? I'm thinking about all those nights and everything. Thank you so much for everything you do. I know it doesn't seem like I appreciate all of it, but I definitely do. So, Mom, I want to say thank you for everything that you've done. I love you very much. You've been there through thick and thin. My mom is just awesome. She's awesome. Welcome to Eastside, where we gather, all of us, each in different stage of our spiritual journey, young and old, all races and colors. We don't exist for ourselves, but for people. People that haven't been invited, people that haven't been cared for, who have walked away from God. People have a past that pushes others away. It's about the hurting and those who have lost hope. We gather as one church, not as individuals, not as separate campuses, but as a family pushing towards the same thing, knowing that Jesus was not for the select few, but for all of us. We believe Jesus is the hope in a world of darkness, and it's through His church that the world will find light. We believe who we choose to be today will determine the world of tomorrow. So we have a vision, to begin each day with purpose, to open our hearts and minds to learn something new, to let go of our comfortable living to reach the searching, the broken, the hurting, to focus on what really matters, to band together and fight against the darkness, a vision to be the church Jesus called us to be. This isn't just a church. Eastside is a movement of people who gather together with Jesus declaring, this is for everyone.
Kingdom coming 
Till that stone was moved for good For the lamb and conquered death And the devils from their tombs And the angels stood in love For the souls of all who come To the Father are restored And the church of Christ was born It is so good to gather together and join in one voice to declare those truths that we need to hear each and every week. You sound great. You look great. Go ahead and grab a seat. Hey, my name's Jake, and I am the Anaheim Campus Pastor, and let me be the first to wish you a very happy Mother's Day. Can we celebrate that together? That's so fun. Uh, my wife uh, just gave birth to our fourth child, and every single time that I watch her do that, every single time that I'm in that delivery room watching her do her thing, I have this moment of clarity in my head and in my heart where I think to myself, you could not pay me enough money to do what she just did. All right, moms are superheroes that deserve to be appreciated and celebrated all year long, okay? All year long. Now we also understand that weekends like this can bring a mixed bag of emotions. Uh, relationships are complicated and they're nuanced. Sometimes they're really difficult. And maybe this year you've been struggling with infertility or like our family experienced a miscarriage. Maybe you lost a child or there's just this distance between you and your mom. And the good news is, is that we do not follow a God that is indifferent and distant from our pain. In fact, it's just the opposite. I'd love to read from Hebrews chapter four to you. He says, the Jesus, this high priest of ours, understands our weakness for he faced all the same testings we do, yet he did not sin. So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There he will we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. Friends, we don't have some God that just left us on our own. Instead, he sent his son to experience everything that we have experienced. And so even though he's all powerful, he's incredibly gentle. And even though he's all knowing, he's wildly patient. And even though he's perfectly holy, he was gracious with you and me. And so in our moment of deepest pain, in our moment of need, we can come and find the grace and the mercy that we need the most. Every week we pause to remember just what kind of God it is that we worship. And so right now we're gonna take this thing called communion. Communion is our reminder of the lengths that Jesus went to to love us into new life. If you didn't grab the communion elements on the way in, you can just raise your hand and a change maker would love to help you out. If you're participating online, we hope you'll use the elements that are available to you. There's this bread and juice that represents Jesus' body and blood. And just, again, the single greatest act of sacrifice and love this world has ever seen is worth remembering. And if you're here and you're new and, and you're not really sure where you stand or what you believe, we just want to give you these next few moments of quiet as an opportunity to reflect on what you've heard. But please know that I believe today could be the day that begins a journey with Jesus and your life will never be the same and you are always welcome here at Eastside. 
For those of us that are followers of Jesus, this is our opportunity to remember so you can take communion in your own time. shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn it face toward you and give you peace. The Lord bless you and keep you Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Whenever you're ready, can we stand together as we sing? Amen. Children and their children, and their children may 
His presence go before you And behind you And beside you All around you And within you He's with you He's with you In the morning In the evening In your coming And your going And your weeping And rejoicing He's for you 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 So great to worship together. You can go ahead and take a seat. As you do that, take a look at this video. My name is Callan Johnson. I'm Levi Johnson. And we've been coming to Eastside for about three years now. Um, and we serve in a multitude of areas on the Redlands campus, um, Kidside specifically, also at the Grill. We had Ellie as, as our, our first child, our biological child, and we always kind of had talked about, especially Kellen talked about, like wanting to do something more and, and support someone else who, who really needed the help. And uh, so we started looking into foster care and adoption and everything. We were able to adopt, uh, and it's really just changed it changed everything. At the time we lived in San Bernardino and it's one of the most impacted counties in the U.S. And just knowing that we could be able to help our neighbors, as heartbreaking as that can be on our end, how beautiful it is for them. And that redemption story that can be seen. Just being a part of Eastside here has been so cool because the everyone here is just so supportive. Uh, and they're here for like what we need. We've received meals, we've received like just like, oh, here's a gift card, go out to dinner and we'll watch your kids. Like, and that means so much. They're here to just say, hey man, like we're praying for you. We support you in this. We love that you're doing it and we wanna help you. And Eastside is good at helping hold us up as needed, but I'd say they're also good at celebrating with us. Um, and it's huge to remember those win moments. Yeah, you don't have to be ready to take in kids yourself just to help uh, with foster care, but there's lots of ways that you can help just with small things and a great way to find out about that is to reach out to local compassion and find out how you could plug in there and help out families. Well, can we celebrate that together? Truly an incredible story. As followers of Jesus, we're convinced that it's our responsibility and it's our honor to invest in supporting life all in all stages. And part of that is by caring for vulnerable children, like becoming a foster family. And maybe that's something that you've been considering or even praying over in this recent season. And we, as your church, want to do everything we can to equip you and encourage you in that journey. And so you can go to eastside.com local and you can find out about the tools that are available to you. 
And at our SoCal campuses, there is a foster family info meeting coming up on May 22nd, and you do not want to miss that. We want to do everything we can to support you in that journey. Uh, you need to know the generosity just bleeds through every part of who Eastside is. It's why we support foster families. It's why we build schools in Kenya. It's why we support refugees fleeing Ukraine. We want to love the people that we live around locally, and we want to support our brothers and sisters all over the world. And so when you're ready to be a part of a mission like that, there are three easy ways to be generous toward that mission. You can give at eastside.com. You can give in the Eastside app. Or here in Anaheim, there are black boxes on your way out, and you can give that way as well. Now, last weekend was so exciting because we had a record number of people participating in Next Steps. Uh, Next Steps is the opportunity for you to learn all about Eastside and how you can be a part of it. It is a four-week experience, and you can jump in at any time. You'll meet other people that are new at Eastside. You will learn all about the church. You'll have a ton of fun, and you will go home with your very own Eastside swag, and you will not regret that at all. You can even jump in today. So for more info about Next Steps, it's eastside.com slash next steps. You can get your questions answered there. And I hope you will jump in very, very soon. Now, if you are new, or maybe this is your very first time with us, I want to say a special welcome to you. In fact, if you call Eastside home right now, will you welcome, will you help me welcome anyone that's here for the very first time? Man, that's amazing. We love it. It is not lost on us just what kind of step you took by showing up today. And we have a gift of our appreciation waiting for you at a place called Guest Central. It's right outside these doors. You can get a travel mug and a card for a free meal at the grill on your way out today. And if you're participating online, you can go to eastside.com slash connect and you can connect that way as well. And because it is Mother's Day, we have a very special wrinkle to Guest Central today. If you are a woman here today and you have never stopped by Guest Central, you need to go because you have the chance once you fill out the form to win a $200 gift card to Target. All right? That's amazing. I hope you take us up on that. I don't know if you knew this, but in the original Greek, Target translates to catnip for ladies. All right? I don't know if you knew that. It's true. And as your friend, you do not need another throw pillow, okay? But, uh, but you do you. It's your day, all right? So stop by Guest Central, fill out the form for a chance to win $200. I don't know what more you need. Now, not only do we have some, some prizes for our first-time guests, but we also just want to celebrate all the women here at Eastside, whether you're a mother, a mother figure, a friend, an aunt, a sister, all of you have an impact on your life. And so if I need all the ladies right now to pull out your phone, okay? Pull out your phone, open up the camera app, and then I want you to scan the QR code that's going to be behind me right here, okay? Just scan that QR code. There's a real simple form for you to fill out, and you too can have an opportunity to win a shopping spree yourself, all right? Open the camera app, scan the QR code, fill out the form, and we want to celebrate you and encourage you with gifts, a shopping spree that you have a chance to win yourself, all right? So do that right now. Again, from the bottom of our heart, we want to wish you a very special Mother's Day. And because as moms, every once in a while, you just need to sit back and laugh. We have this special video for you. When you're feeling lost or scared, when a home-cooked meal is all you can think of, who do you turn to? This spring, celebrate the mom in your life with a brand new fragrance. Introducing Mama. Whether she's heading out to the office or staying in to keep the house in perfect order. Maybe she's bringing orange slices after soccer practice or cooking the perfect meal for the grandkids. Hello? It says my order's ready for pickup. I'm here to pick up some mama for my mama. Mama. Whether she's closing deals or opening Capri Suns, mama. Um, can I just... Mama, she makes that minivan look like a Ferrari. Mama, and spoiling the grandkids never looked easier. I just... Mama, a fragrance for the perfectly unique moms in all our lives. I'm just gonna...
Well, what's up, Eastside family? I just want to wish a happy Mother's Day to all of you fantastic moms, mom figures out there in Park Rapids and Bellflower, Redlands, Anaheim, throughout our online family. I hope you feel loved, affirmed, and appreciated on this special weekend. I know Mother's Day has lots of emotions on so many different levels for some of you. For instance, this is my first Mother's Day where my mom's in heaven. And some of you, like me, you're missing your mom, or, or there are other dynamics at play right now, and I just want you to know at Eastside, we see you, we love you, and we care. Today, I'm so thrilled to have one of the greatest moms I know with us for Mother's Day. Jody Hickerson is also one of our favorite guest speakers. She and her husband, Mike, planted a thriving, hope-giving church in Ventura, California, over 11 years ago that is just rocking and marking thousands of lives. Jody's a sought after speaker all over the country and she's the mother of three vibrant girls and we love her. So every campus, every venue, let's give a great big Mother's Day weekend welcome to Jody Hickerson. Man. Thank you so much. I love being here. Uh, my name is Jody Hickerson, and I get to teach here at Eastside from time to time and absolutely love being here with you guys and love this team so much. Want to welcome all of the campuses, Bellflower Park, Rapids, Redlands, online. Um, it's just so good to be together. And happy Mother's Day again to all of the moms out there, all of the grandmothers and great-grandmothers, um, foster moms, awesome aunts, primary caregivers, spiritual mothers, mentors. Like, Can we just give it up for all the women? women uh, that are just play such a significant role in our lives. I'm so grateful, so grateful. Um, I'm a mom. My husband, Mike, and I, we do have three daughters. They're 20 and 17 and 14. Uh, so we're going to take a moment right now to pray for me. Um, no, I'm kidding. Uh, no, they're awesome. And there's so many wonderful things about being a mom. There's also hard things, right? Things no one tells you. Uh, things that people don't talk about at parties or post on the gram. And uh, sometimes there's really hard seasons. And maybe you even today are in the middle of one of those um, hard seasons. I mean, just know God knows and he sees you and he's not forgotten you and he is with you and he is working. And I love that we can trust our God in that way, right in the middle of our stories. You know, one of the things that I think is universal for all moms is the late nights. Can I get an amen? Like the lack of sleep, right? Like there's so many late nights, you know, whether it's, you know, they're newborns and they're up all night long and you're just barely sleeping or then it turns into like a kid that needs help with homework and they forgot they had this one assignment and so you're up super late or they, they're crawling in bed with you in the middle of the night. Isn't that so freaky? It's like you were asleep and then it's like, whoa, there you are. Okay, you know, and it just freaks you out. Or it's the kid that's like, I mean, they're gonna have a life altering conversation right now, right at bedtime. Like that's when it's gonna happen and we're gonna go all the way down that rabbit trail or you're waiting up for teenagers to come home and hopefully make curfew. Like late nights seem to be just part of the gig, like, like forever in my experience. Oh, and I think that late nights are pretty you know, universal for all of us. Moms are not, we all go through, um, you know, not just late nights as far as the clock goes, but late nights in our soul, late nights of uncertainty. We go through late nights of confusion, late nights of sorrow or anxiety. We go through dark times, right, where we just feel like we're in the middle of it and we can't see where we're going. And we can't see how things are gonna end up and we can't see the light of day. And so today, I just wanna rewind a couple thousand years and look at a late night in the life of Jesus and his disciples and, and what went down in the middle of the night in this boat out on a lake. And I'm telling you, what happened in this late night was so incredible and so unbelievable and so astounding, like they could not wrap their minds around what they had just seen. And this, this isn't a story, by the way, it's not a fairy tale or a fable, this is a, a real life account that was written down by three different eyewitnesses who could not believe what they had just seen. So I'm gonna read through this story and then we're gonna kind of go back and see what we might learn from Jesus today. What we might learn from the guys that were on the boat that night, what we might learn from the experience of a dude named Peter and allow this late night with Jesus to maybe reach through thousands of years of history into 
our late nights. Matthew chapter 14 says, immediately after this, Jesus insisted that his disciples get back in the boat and cross to the other side of the lake while he sent the people home. After sending them home, he went up to the hills by himself to pray. Night fell while he was there alone. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from land for a strong wind had risen and they were fighting heavy waves. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came towards them walking on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified and in their fear, they cried out, it's a ghost. But Jesus spoke to them at once and said, don't be afraid. He said, take courage, I am here. Then Peter called to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water towards Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind and waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. And Jesus immediately reached out his hand and grabbed him. You have little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshiped him saying, truly, you are the son of God. I mean, can you imagine being on the boat in the middle of the night on this lake with the wind and the waves and seeing this go down? I mean, I'm guessing these guys, I and mean, they told this story for decades at campfires. You're like, you won't believe what we saw, right? But I just want to rewind to kind of the beginning of this account because we picked up this story kind of in the middle of the day. It started, that account started with immediately after this. So we kind of got to ask, you know, immediately after what? And just to give a little context, I mean, it had been a day for Jesus. Y'all ever had a day? You know, you get to the end of the day and it's like, that, it has been a day. And sometimes we don't think about Jesus having, you know, long days or hard days, but he did. Earlier that day, Jesus has gotten the news that his friend, um, his ministry partner, his, his cousin, John the Baptist had been killed, unjustly beheaded by King Herod, and he was gone. Like they, they'd already buried him. His friends had buried him, and then they went to tell Jesus about it. And upon hearing that heavy news, Jesus tries to get into a boat and like privately withdraw. Like he's got to clear his head, but there's a crowd of people that see him and they start following him along the shoreline. I'm not talking a few people. This is a crowd of hundreds of people that turn into thousands of people that are following him along the shoreline as he's trying to just get a little space, but he was not getting away. So he pulls onto the shore and they need things from him. And it says that Jesus had compassion on them. And he began to heal people that were sick and he began to give hope to people who needed it and begin to help people. And, and so he's doing this for this entire multitude of people and his disciples finally come to him as evening falls and says, okay, like let's send these people home. It's been a day. And it says again that Jesus had compassion on this crowd and he said, we don't need to send them home. They're hungry. Like let's feed them. And his followers are like, we don't have anything to give them. We've only got these five loaves of bread and these two fish. And Jesus is like, cool, you know, I can deal with that. And so Jesus does another miracle and he takes these loaves of bread and these fish and he begins to pass them out and they multiply and multiply and multiply until everyone has had as much as they wanted and they still had leftovers. I mean, Jesus, this had been a day where he's giving and giving and giving and giving. And then immediately after this, Jesus insisted that his disciples get back into the boat and cross to the other side of the lake while he sent the people home. After sending them home, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. Night fell while he was there alone. Now, obviously, we, we are not Jesus. And I don't think any of us have had a day where, you know, our cousin got beheaded and we've also miraculously healed people who were sick and fed thousands of people. But I do think that we can relate, man, to those days when maybe we've gotten some really hard news or we're going through something personally or we're sad about something. And you know what? Life goes on and like our jobs are still there and hello, our kids still need us. And we still got to show up for that thing and dinner still got to get made and we're bombarded with the needs of others. And we want to have compassion on them. But man, it feels like we're giving and giving and giving and giving. This is why I love what Jesus does. He does what he knows he needs. 
He goes up into the hills by himself and he prays and gets alone with his father until nightfall. And man, I want to encourage every single one of us here who in our late nights of receiving hard news, in our late nights of pouring out, in those late nights where it feels like we're showing up again and again and again, even though we're dealing with some sort of undercurrent of grief or heartache or, or sadness ourselves, man, we got to remember to get alone with God. It is so important. Setting aside time to get alone, from God, to get alone with God, to hear from his word, man, to unburden ourselves. It had been such a day for Jesus and he knew he needed to get with his father. For us to be alone with God, to listen and, and to cry and be strengthened and to be sustained. Like this is our lifeline. None of us, we were not meant to do life apart from him and apart from his power. And we cannot keep pouring out and pouring out and pouring out without spending this time alone with God to allow him to pour into us. His truth, his guidance, his strength, his love, his grace, his spirit, man, we need it. I mean, if Jesus needed it, and we see this all throughout his life when he walked the planet, that he regularly got alone to pray and be with his father. I mean, if Jesus needed it, we cannot underestimate how much we need it. Remember to get alone with God. Verse 24, meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from land for a strong wind had risen and they were fighting heavy waves. So Jesus is praying by himself and they're out there and they're in trouble. I mean, I don't know all the personality types on the boat, but can you imagine that they're just like <laughs> frustrated? You know, somebody's going like, seriously, Jesus, you made us get out here and now there's a storm. Of course this would happen. And you know, someone else is like, just stop complaining and help me row. And there's always the dude that's like, I told you we shouldn't have left tonight. I checked the radar. It was going to be bad visibility. The wind was going to be high, you know? And isn't that how it is sometimes? Where we feel like, we're just doing what God told us to do. But man, we're met with so much resistance. And we're too far out now to turn back. And it feels like, you know, this is the assignment, what he told us to do. But it's, it's like we're fighting wind and waves and we feel like we're in trouble. And I've been there. I love that the guys in the boat, they don't turn back. And I think what they did is what we can do in our late nights when things are harder than we thought. When there is resistance that we didn't anticipate coming. When we start doubting if this is, is this even right? Is this even the direction I was supposed to go? Is this where we should be headed? This is the thing, we just do the last thing he told you to do. Do the last thing he told you to do. That's what they just kept doing. They kept rowing because it was the last thing Jesus told them to do. Listen, so often we can talk ourselves out of obedience to God, can't we? And we make excuses. We turn back when it gets hard. We start to doubt him. We give up. We start to justify or question like, is this what God really wanted me to do? Or was that like bad pizza? Like, I don't, I don't really even know. Maybe for you right now, it is with a kid. It's in parenting and you are really trying to do, do things God's way and do the way that God is leading you. But you are met with like resistance every single day and it is hard. Maybe for you, it's an addiction. You know that God is leading you towards freedom and towards recovery. He wants you to get to the other side but it's harder than you thought. And so you've started justifying. Maybe it's the work on the marriage. You know, you started the counseling, but you just don't want to finish it because it's harder than you thought. Maybe it's something exciting. It's a new role or a new job or a new business or a new calling. And man, you thought God was in it, but it has just been a struggle. Maybe you know you don't need to keep going back to that guy or to that girl, or to that relationship, or the, to that environment, or to that friend group. But leaving is tougher than you thought. And you're met with resistance. Maybe you didn't know you would get this kind of resistance from your parents, or from your friends when you started going where God is leading you to go. But listen, if God is leading you to it, he is going to lead you through it. 
So when, not if, when we are met with resistance, just do the last thing he told you to do. Keep going. Keep obeying. Keep rowing. Well, about three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came towards them walking on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. And in their fear, they shouted, it's a ghost. But Jesus spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid. He said, take courage. I am here. I love that it tells us it was three o'clock in the morning, right? Because that is just smack dab in the middle of the night, in the pitch black of night. When the wind and waves are against them, here comes Jesus walking on the water. I mean, can you imagine? They're frustrated and they're fighting the waves and they're scared, but then all of a sudden they see this figure that looks like it's floating and it's coming towards them. And they're like, seriously? Now we gotta deal with a ghost? Like, what is going on tonight? Like, what is in the world is happening? And Jesus says, no, no, don't be afraid. It's me. I'm here. And man, in our late nights, when it just seems pitch black, we don't know how this story ends because we're in the middle of it. And this journey feels long and harder than we thought. We don't know when we're going to see the light of day right in the middle of it. Look for Jesus to show up in unexpected ways because he does and he will. And sometimes just like the guys on the boat, we don't recognize him at first, but he is moving towards you. He has not forgotten you. It's in the unexpected text from a friend who was just checking in because God had put you on their heart and they sent you that verse. It's the random check you weren't expecting. It's it's the moment in worship where that lyric just hit different in your soul. It's when you think you're the only one in the room and God is speaking to you. It's the conversation you didn't even know you needed or would ever have. It's through the generosity of a neighbor or a comfort of a a nurse or a teacher that goes above and beyond. It's the prayers of your mothers and your grandmothers and your friends and your family. It's the opening of doors and the closing of other ones. It's the timing that you thought would be different, but turns out it's right on time. You see, Jesus is always working. He's always moving towards you, even in the dark. And he will show up in unexpected ways and say, hey, don't be afraid. It's me. That's me. I'm here for you. Look for it. Look for him to show up in unexpected ways. So 3 a.m., pitch black. Jesus shows up, freaks them out, and then calms them down. And then it gets real crazy, okay? Then Peter called to him and said, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water toward Jesus. I mean, come on, this dude is crazy. I mean, he is just, there's wind and there's waves and there's Jesus walking on top of water and he's like, can I try? Can I, can I try? Like, tell me to come. And Jesus says, come, and he steps over. Can you imagine the side of the boat? He's standing up on the water and he's taking steps, walking on water towards Jesus. Now, because we know the end of the story, the rest of the story, we know what happens. And man, I have heard preacher after preacher over the years just skip to that part. Like, you know, and then Peter took his eyes off the Lord and he started to sink and he started to focus on the wind and the waves and and he started to sink. But hello, Peter got out of the boat. Like Peter was the only one that had the faith to say, can I step over and be a part of this miracle? I mean, Peter exhibited more faith than anyone else on that boat. He, he stepped over the side of the boat, let his bare feet hit the water, and he walked towards Jesus. And some of us need to just be inspired today or emboldened today. That in our late nights of uncertainty, in our late nights of the unknown, in our late nights of, you know, never done this before, and this seems a little bit crazy, to step out in faith into the unknown. Some of y'all need to hear today, take that risk. Do that thing. Step out in faith into the unknown. I love that Peter said, you know, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you. And I think that's so important because if we're going to step out in faith, if we're going to risk, we got to know that God is in it. 
We have to know that it's his spirit leading us, that it's him saying, come, that we're just not stepping out and risking, you know, based on our own ideas or our own agenda or figuring out our own truth, but it's, but it's him. And thankfully we have ways to know whether it's him that is leading us. We have ways to discern if it's him that's asking us to step out. We can know his character and God is never going to lead us to a place that is contrary to his character. We can know his word. And God will never take us in a direction that is contrary to his word. We can seek godly counsel like he's literally given us each other. And there are people that have the gift of wisdom and discernment that can come alongside of us. And he's given us his spirit to lead us, to guide us, to convict us, to correct us, to stretch us, to comfort us, to empower us. So yes, we ask, Lord, if it's you, but if it is, Even if it seems crazy, even if you've never done it before, even if nobody's ever done it before, step out in faith into the unknown because that's when you and I get to be part of the miracle like Peter did. I mean, make no mistake about it. Stepping out in faith is risky business. To change careers because you know God is leading you to, that takes faith. To stay home for a season, To switch majors again, schools, to start that thing, to show up for that thing, to check into that place, to jump on a plane and go serve people in some underdeveloped country, to open your home to a kid who needs one, to tackle the energy draining care of elderly parents, to give when you know you don't really have it, to pick up and move because you sense that God has opened a door that you're supposed to walk through. Like all of that requires a willingness to risk and to trust God and to sacrifice. But man, that is where your bare feet gets to hit the water and you get to be a part of something bigger than yourself. That miracles will happen in our lives and the lives of people around us when we walk towards Jesus into the unknown, trusting him every step of the way. Verse 30, but when he, Peter, saw the strong wind and waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. And Jesus immediately reached out his hand and grabbed him. You know, it's strange to me because you would think that Peter, out there just walking on top of a lake, walking on water, that he would get like more confident in every step. He'd be like, I'm doing it, man. I'm really doing it. You know, y'all see this, you know, and he just get more confident. But instead, at some point he's walking along and he starts to go, what was I thinking? (laughs) He sees the wind and he sees the waves and the whole like no floor thing. And he's like, what was I thinking? This is crazy. No, I have no business trying this thing out. And so he starts to sink. And then I've been there too. Haven't you? And I just think it's so amazing for us to know, so incredible for us to know about our Savior that in our late nights when we're sinking, you know, when we thought we had it, but we don't. When we're so discouraged because we used to be able to do it, but it just feels like we're failing. We've lost faith that we can even make it. When we start to feel so overwhelmed that we're going under, we can simply ask for his hand. I love that when Peter said, Lord, save me, immediately, it says immediately Jesus reached out his hand and grabbed him. He was right there for him. He was not going to let him sink. He was not going to let him drown. He was there to pick him back up. And the story wasn't over for Peter. He goes on to do amazing things. This was a moment where Jesus picks him back up. And for some of us, it's to, it takes more courage for us to admit when we need help and reach out and ask for it than it does for us to step over the side of the boat, right? Some of us, we like the posture of, no, I'm great walking with God. I I love this. We love that posture more than this one. Help. I need help. And we separate the world into like water walkers and like water sinkers. But Peter was both. And we are both. And there are so many times when we're going to step out in faith and risk and be part of the miracle. And even in that, there are going to be times when we start to get overwhelmed and discouraged and we start to sink. And all we got to do is ask for help. 
And he's going to grab us and save us and pick us back up and catch us and lead us on to more adventures with him. Jesus said to Peter, you have little faith. Why did you doubt? And I just know this wasn't a shameful moment because I know the character of God and he doesn't shame us. I just imagine them hugging on the water. I mean, they're still, they're still out there standing on top of a lake and Jesus hugging Peter going, dude, why did you doubt? You were doing it. You little faith, why'd you, why'd you doubt? And then they climbed into the boat and the wind died down. But you know, Peter had to be thinking that would have been helpful five minutes ago, you know? But then those in the boat worshiped him saying, truly you are the son of God. Truly you are the son of God. And man, I love this ending. They hadn't even made it to the other side. They're still in the middle of the story, but they're worshiping in the middle of it. And maybe that's an encouragement for some of us here today. But I love that they're not, they're not questioning the journey in this moment and they weren't terrified or afraid anymore and they didn't clown Peter for sinking. Something about this moment in the middle of it, they just saw Jesus for who he really was. A savior that moves towards us in the middle of our late dark nights. And then they were amazed and they were in awe and reverence and they worshiped him. And I think that's the response when we live this way. When we remember to get along with God, that we know we have to remain connected to him. We cannot. I know moms, you are super, super heroes, but you cannot keep pouring out and pouring out and pouring out without getting along with God and allowing him to pour in to you. We remember to get alone with him when we when we just do the last thing he told us to do. And it doesn't seem real clear and it seems like there's so much resistance and it seems harder than we thought, but you know we're obeying and we're gonna stay faithful and we're gonna keep rowing and we're gonna keep going. When we look for Jesus to show up in unexpected ways in our story, we will, we will see him. When we trust him enough to step out into the unknown and then when we just ask for his hand when we need help, when we admit we are, we are in over our head and we need help, he's gonna grab us, pick us up, and lead us into more adventures and more steps of faith with him. And man, that's pretty amazing. And I think just compels us to worship him, to see him for who he really is and say, man, truly you are the son of God. Let me pray for us. I thank you, Jesus, for being in the middle all of our stories, being in the middle of our late nights. I thank you for being a savior that does move towards us, that reminds us, hey, I'm here, don't be afraid, it's me, it's me. Thank you. Thank you that you do go before us and behind us and beside us and within us, all around us, you are with us, we are grateful. Thank you so much for that, Jesus. And I just praise you for every woman here and the way that you lead us and guide us and how, how amazing the women here are that, that step out into faith and do sacrifice so much in trusting you. We are grateful. Thank you that we get to be a part of the miracle of your story. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys. Hey, will you help me one more time? I appreciate Jody for spending time with us today. It's so amazing. About uh, 23 years ago, I was a back row kid in a church in Lexington, Kentucky, completely checked out and disconnected. And this one adult volunteer noticed me and invited me to get involved and participate. And at that time, her name was Jody Bro. So Jody and I go way back. Without that invitation, I don't know where I would be. It's changed my life for the better. I'm so glad you got to hear from my friend today. It's so great. Hey, you may be wondering right now, man, I, I want that kind of hope and I want that kind of mercy and I want that kind of grace and I don't even know how I would respond if I did respond. Well, today we get to celebrate with someone that is going all in. This is your example. You could turn your eyes to the baptistry. Here we go. 
Well, this is Darla, and uh, Darla's first time here at Eastside was at Easter. And it was since Easter, she's just felt the Holy Spirit moving and stirring in her heart. And she knew that she needed to make this big step towards baptism. So Darla, it is because of your faith and your decision to follow Jesus with your whole life that it is now our privilege and honor to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried with Christ and raised to new life. Congratulations. Friends, it doesn't get any better than that. That is what it is all about. And if you are ready to take that step, we would love to talk with you and pray with you about that. You can find a staff member. Stop by Guest Central, especially if you're brand new. You definitely want to stop by Guest Central and enter for a chance to win. We are so glad you're here. Hey, next week, we're starting a new series called One, where we're going to talk about how God wants to use every single one of our stories to make a big difference in this world, and you are not going to want to miss it. We can't wait to see you back next week. Happy Mother's Day. Thanks for being at Eastside.